any sufficiently advanced magic is indistinguishable from science. Yeah, I don't think this episode is saying what the creators set out to say. There are a small handful of Futurama episodes that do this weird thing where they try to step up to the plate for science, but then they just kind of stand there and never really take an actual swing. Rage Against the Vaccine is one such episode, and it's very reminiscent of an old Comedy Central episode, something the show seems to be aware of. Dr. Banjo? In the fur. This smartass simian was first introduced in A Clockwork Origin, and plays a similar role here as the skeptic of scientific theories. The episodes have wildly different plots and beats, but roughly share the same theme. The problem is, it seems like the show thinks it's presenting a pro-science message, but similar to the mom episodes I talked about in the Mamazon video, the commentary boils down to, yes, this controversy exists. Obviously, Futurama is a comedy program first and foremost, and I think joking about serious issues and complex topics is a great way to make them more approachable and even more understandable. But when those topics are approached too lightly, you can quickly subvert your own position for the sake of a punchline. Subversion of expectations is of course a staple of both Futurama and comedy as a whole. But Rage Against the Vaccine and A Clockwork Origin are clearly setting out to say something. As I said, they're both bringing forward a pro-science argument against contemporary denials of scientific theories and ideas, vaccine efficacy, and the theory of evolution, respectively. And while they do spend a little time explaining those concepts, the episodes focus mostly on dunking on their opposition. Can you assure me there is absolutely no science in this vaccine? We will not give in to the thinkers! Okay, I get it. Like I said, it's a comedy program, but that's kind of the point. You need to have tact and nuance when you're dealing with these sensitive issues. There aren't steadfast rules on how to pull this off, but I think there's a Fox episode that deals in vaguely similar themes, but ultimately handles it better. I say vaguely similar because if it were just the same pro-science reaction episodes, well, it wouldn't really be that good. Okay, that's not fair. These episodes aren't awful, but their messaging isn't great. A Clockwork Origin is a great example of this, so let's start there. The episode aired a little over a year after a controversial Texas board education decision about how science is taught in Texas schools. The issue quickly took to the national stage and eventually into pop culture. Evolution is under attack in our schools? Here's the problem, though. There isn't a debate here, like specifically. Look, creationism can't be proven wrong because it's literally impossible to prove either way. Whether you believe it or not isn't relevant. It simply isn't based in science. So it has no business in science class. Evolution, on the other hand, has decades of research and data supporting its claims and has progressed over time as new information has emerged because it's based on science. And I remind you that evolution is merely a theory, like gravity or the shape of the earth. This isn't a serious man, or orangutan, making these assertions. First, gravity is a scientific law, not a theory. Further, his use of the word theory is deliberately misleading here. Dr. Banjo is trying to make it sound like evolution is a hypothesis. This was one of the key tactics of the anti-evolution movement in the late aughts. If you can make it seem like evolution is an unproven hypothesis, it feels more comparable to an unprovable idea like creationism. The goal was never to get rid of evolution. The goal is to treat the concepts as equals when objectively they are not. Science isn't a belief set. It is a testing methodology for observing the universe as objectively as humanly possible. Creationism and intelligent design are unobservable, untestable, and by extension, unscientific. This is the difference the episode needed to highlight if they wanted to have a pro-science message. Explaining the difference between hypothesis and theory, showing the scientific method, you know, SCIENCE! But instead of actually coming to science's defense on science's terms, the show unwittingly capitulates to the creationist message. The Earth was created in eons, not days. Yes, relative to you it was eons. This is literally a talking point for intelligent design. To be clear, if you believe this stuff, it's fine. I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm just saying it's also not science. This episode is about evolution versus creaturism being taught in science class. 
The backdrop of this episode is that Texas school board decision I mentioned before. It's not like the Board of Education said intelligent design needs to be taught in school. In fact, they can't do that according to a federal ruling from 2005. Instead, the concern was that the language of the decision left openings for creationism to creep into science classrooms through national textbook publishers following the guidelines of the largest buyer in the market, Texas. The episode falls victim to exactly this strategy. Consider the arc of Professor Farnsworth compared to his foil, Dr. Banjo. Farnsworth begins staunchly against the very notion of creaturism, but after literally becoming the concept of the intelligent creator, he ends the episode not believing it, but acknowledging the possibility. I admit it's possible, however unlikely, that some wise and all-knowing alien monster set evolution in motion here on Earth. Dr. Banjo, who is aggressively anti-evolution, sees digital photos of anecdotal evidence, which is not scientific in the slightest, concedes that evolution is indeed possible, but adds, Evolution set in motion by a wise and all-knowing creator. Their compromise is not equal. Dr. Banjo grips his faith just as tightly as he had at the beginning of the episode, but the professor has given up major ground. He's fine with an untestable hypothesis being introduced as an alternative to the scientific theory of evolution in science class. Finally, a world in which I'm happy to raise my son. I think this episode is anti-science. I honestly don't think that this was the intention though. The topic of evolution brushes up against religion, so it makes it potentially controversial when mishandled. Shows don't want to ostracize portions of their audience by taking too firm of a stance in any direction. Most like to toe the line somewhere between the controversy so they don't upset anybody. Sort of like what we saw with the grade school level social commentary in the recent Mamazon episode. But if you don't want to take a stance, then you shouldn't be setting out so aggressively to take one, like they did in both A Clockwork Origin and Rage Against the Vaccine. You can absolutely do this. In fact, Futurama has sort of done this in the past, albeit not as overtly, but that's kind of the point. Spanish Fry is a Fox era episode that has a similar theme going throughout the episode. Instead of singling out and tackling one current event, the episode rolls a handful of elements that serve the same purpose. There are two unscientific ideas at play here. The first is conspiracy theories like Bigfoot and UFOs. The second is bullshit aphrodisiacs. Rhinoceros Horn was once incorrectly considered a powerful aphrodisiac with no evidence whatsoever. Those myths have since been scientifically debunked, but that doesn't mean people didn't still believe it. But instead of coming after Rhinoceros Horn directly, something with baggage, we get something we're so familiar with that our brain deletes it from our vision so we don't have to look at it all day. The idea of the human nose being an aphrodisiac is absurd on its face, sowing doubt into the rhino myth as a whole. It's not a huge departure from the concept of rhinoceros horn, but it's definitely more than changing a couple letters in creationism to make it creaturism. Running parallel to this metaphor is a Bigfoot story. Bigfoot is one of those myths that is well known for being an urban legend. In a poll from Civic Science in July of 2022, 13% of American adults believe in Sasquatch, as opposed to 31% for aliens. That number of Bigfoot believers is actually on the rise right now, so it's possible that it was even lower in the early aughts. But by running this human horn metaphor parallel to a well-known urban legend, the episode is subtly hinting for you to approach the idea of keratin being an aphrodisiac with a healthy amount of skepticism. We all kind of understand that if Bigfoot was real, we'd have some evidence by now. We even see in the episode Farnsworth tries to shut down the whole notion of Bigfoot due to that lack of evidence. Bunk, I say! Bring me a bag full of Bigfoot's droppings or shut up! Here he's not outright saying the creature can't possibly exist. He's saying that he won't entertain the claim without some sort of evidence. Later in the episode, that evidence is produced in the form of, well, a Sasquatch. An important beat in the plot is the fact that the park ranger wants to cut off one of Bigfoot's big feet to prove the existence of this gentle wood ape. He's unable to, but does still manage to collect a sample of the Sasquatch's fur. Bigfoot appearing is a subversion of our expectations and has the potential to undercut our larger metaphor about the debunked rhino horn myth. If Bigfoot is actually real, it's possible rhino horn actually works too, right? I mean, science makes discoveries all the time. Surely new evidence could emerge. And sure, anything is possible in science. But a lack of evidence for something is very different 
from evidence against something. Bigfoot appearing near the end of the episode may even suggest Rhino Horn being an aphrodisiac is more far-fetched than Bigfoot. It's in no way an explanation of the scientific method I asked for, but it's a lot different from the professor seeing anecdotal evidence of something, acknowledging it as a possibility, and accepting it should therefore be taught in schools alongside evolution. So where does Rage Against the Vaccine land on that spectrum? Much like the show's take on intelligent design in science class, this latest episode is a pretty clear commentary on a recent controversy centered around an anti-science movement. In this case, anti-vaxxers. And like A Clockwork Origin, it kind of misses the mark, but in a different, weird way. The episode ultimately creates a vaccine for Explovid, using voodoo conducted in a state-of-the-art biotech lab, and in doing so gives a very basic explanation for how messenger RNA vaccines work. This is, I think, meant to be the pro-science statement from the show, the science behind the vaccine. But this scene doesn't show science. It just describes how the immune system responds to the vaccine. It does have the visual trappings of scientific research, but they conduct a single trial of the voodoo vaccine before it goes to the general public, which is definitely not scientific. The real-world vaccine was created using a technology that wasn't new, but also wasn't widely understood. That, coupled with the speed at which it was produced, caused some concern for some people. And I want to pump the brakes really hard for a second before I come off as an anti-vax apologist. Like I said earlier, if you believe in intelligent design or creationism, whatever, you do you. Being anti-vax is not the same thing. If you're anti-vax, you're either an idiot or a victim of a disinformation campaign. I'll get to that in a second, but first, if you are anti-vax, stop watching this video, open a private browser, search for vaccine information with neutrally worded search terms, please, and do your own fucking research. But like, you know, out of the bubble you're stuck in. Where was I? Right. People's concerns about vaccines. Look, it's complicated. It's reasonable to have good faith questions when hearing about something for the first time. Explaining it away as magic simply isn't enough, especially when we all carry access to the sum of human knowledge in our pockets. The problem is, using that internet to confirm beliefs you already have is incredibly easy if you're willing to just trust anybody that agrees with you. And googling something wrong might send you down some disinformation tunnel that feeds you nothing but the same bullshit. All this misinformation on Facebook is tearing us apart. But the misinformation commentary here isn't commentary at all. It feels like it's just a vehicle to include the Omicronians so they can make this joke. It's a highly contagious Omicron variant. Look, I'll admit, Futurama was the only reason I even knew how to pronounce Omicron when that variant hit. But that's exactly why I saw this joke coming, and I am sure I'm not the only one. And if the audience knows a joke is coming, you've got to at least figure out a way to put a twist on it. This is very far from the point. The point is the inclusion of misinformation misses the mark big time. In the press conference, three reporters are able to ask questions about the new vaccines created by Farnsworth and Wernstrom. The basis for each question gets increasingly more absurd. The first one is reasonable. It's a journalist checking up on reports. The second, less so. According to an anonymous internet post. And the third is literally just a rumor. This could be an interesting commentary on misinformation. News outlets picking up and running with stories that aren't vetted properly but are hot on social media is a real problem. Controversial rumors can create heated debates, boosting engagement, and by extension, the reach of misinformation posts. The episode addresses none of this. Instead, all three accusations in the press conference turn out to be true. Not only was the anonymous online poster correct, but the rumor that Dr. Banjo literally admits he made up is immediately proven to be true. So, the scientist-backed vaccines in the episode are filled with weird side effects, have surveillance microchips in them, and don't actually seem to work at all, 
and the vaccine that works is voodoo magic with a single person trial run. Further, the choice to have voodoo stand in for science and then have the professor, a scientist, be skeptical of voodoo leads to weird moments like this. Anything I can't understand is fake. Professor Farnsworth is one of the most brilliant scientific minds of his generation. I am 100% certain he would understand damn near anything you presented to him with scientific evidence. The idea that the professor wouldn't immediately understand that the voodoo vaccine is an mRNA vaccine when it was explained to him is absurd. Much more importantly, shutting down something you don't understand is criminally incurious for a scientist. It might not be to the same degree as a clockwork origin, but Rage Against the Vaccine seems a little accidentally anti-science as well. I'll admit it's a bit extreme to call these episodes outright anti-science, but if their messaging isn't harmful, it certainly isn't helpful. And while both episodes try to make direct allusions to real world issues in a way that seems like they're trying to help, ultimately, they don't say much at all. So next time Futurama steps up to the plate for science, let's hope Leela's pitching. Anyway, thanks for watching, bye. <laughs>